iliotibial band, piriformis syndromes, and sciatica. Mobility sequence instructions. Although these are three distinct conditions, anatomically and functionally, their symptoms and their muscles tend to overlap. So it is best to address all three conditions at the same time so as not to miss anything. Please be familiar with the pelvic floor lower core stability sequence, particularly the foundational core stability and the pelvic ridge. Core stability plays a critical role in addressing these three conditions. Beginning on your back, rest comfortably and bring your left knee to your chest and then you will hold this for 30 seconds. Now switch, bring your right knee to your chest and hold that for 30 seconds. Now we begin to stretch the lower back by bringing the left leg up and then we will bend it over to the right. You can put your left foot behind your knee or you can put it in front of your knee or you can reach your foot outward across the floor as shown in the insert. Now we switch sides, bring the right hip and the right knee over the left side, place your foot behind your knee, in front of your knee, or as the insert shows, reach your right foot out in front. Hold this for 30 seconds. Hip flexor stretch. Now roll onto your side, we're going to stretch out the top leg. Drop the top foot behind you, as shown, as far back as possible, and if you're doing this on a bed, you can drop your foot off the side of your bed and drop your top shoulder behind you in order to straighten out your upper back. I can also move my bottom foot forward a little bit to increase the stretch as well as improve my balance. And if I can, I'll reach back and grab my ankle and pull a little bit harder to increase the stretch. Now we move into a simple diaphragm stretch. Relax your knees slightly bent, relax your abdomen. Gently curl your fingers underneath your ribs on both sides and breathe into your fingers for 30 seconds. Now we do lumbar flattening as explained in my lumbar flattening instruction video. But I want you now to add the pelvic floor and butt squeezing to this movement. So pelvic floor squeezing, butt squeezing, lumbar flattening, hold for 5 seconds, relax. And repeat this for 30 seconds. Now we stretch out the groin muscles, which are the adductor muscles. Bring our feet together and try to press our knees downward to the floor as far as you can. Hold this for 30 seconds. Now we do knee hugs. Straighten the left foot out, bring the right foot over the left knee and hug the knee as shown. If you have the flexibility, you can reach your left shoulder behind your right knee as shown in the picture on the left and hold the stretch for 30 seconds. Now we switch sides and bring the left foot over the right knee, hug the knee, and again, if you can put your right shoulder behind your left knee, you can add that as well. Now we move into toe reaches, which will stretch the entire posterior chain and help work that sciatic nerve. First, get an assessment of where you're at. Can you reach and touch your toes? Or can you go only after your ankles? Can you bring your toes towards your head, head down towards your chin, and back and forth. Alternate back and forth like this move. Toes up, head down for 30 seconds. Now we change things up. And now we'll point our toes and bend our chin, lift our head up, bring our toes towards our head, point our toes downward, bend the chin down, and we'll alternate this for 30 seconds. Now try to reach for your toes, and if you can't, grab your ankles, and try to hold this position for 30 seconds. Now we do alternating toe pointing, as shown either while you're holding your ankle or you can grasp your toes. 
and do this for 30 seconds. The simple pelvic bridge. Squeeze your pelvic floor muscles, squeeze your buttocks muscles, flatten your lumbar spine, lift it in the air, hold it for a few seconds, return to neutral, relax. And repeat this for 15 to 30 seconds. To make it a little bit more complicated, you can put your arms across your chest or behind your head. It is critical to be able to master this coordinated movement and to be able to do the pelvic bridging for 30 seconds at least before you move on to the next three core stability exercises. However, even if you're still working on the pelvic bridge, you still need to work on the strength of your hip muscles. So I want you to proceed to the sideline hip strengthening exercises and skip the next three advanced core stability exercises. Now as your core gets stronger, you can add the more advanced core stability exercises in this routine. Now we move into hip abductor strengthening, which is strengthening the muscles on the outside of your hip. So lay on the side that is most comfortable for you to begin with, so you can be practicing this. Whatever is your problematic side, consider doing that exercise twice as many times as the good side. So now we'll be exercising the top leg. Start by placing the foot of the top leg below you. I'm placing my hand on my hip so I know what muscles I'm firing. And I start lifting. I'll do this for 15 to 30 seconds. Take the top foot and you're going to push it forward and bring it back in a small arch. Do this for 15 to 30 seconds. Now we move our foot backwards in an arching movement also for 15 to 30 seconds. Now combine both movement sequences for 15 to 30 seconds. Next, we work on the inner thigh muscle by lifting the lower leg off the floor at least 10 times. Now to work on that tender point in your butt, get a tennis ball or an equally hard ball, but I like the tennis ball because it has a little bit of give. Some other balls are just too hard. And find that tennis point and just start moving back and forth on it. And then you can also just rest there and just let it sit for 30 seconds. You can do this for 30 seconds up to even two, three minutes. You can move back and forth again, or you can just let the ball sit and press against one particular spot. Now we move into foam rolling the iliotibial band. And I have a set of two different rollers. For the iliotibial band, I prefer to use a softer blue foam as opposed to the hard shell trigger point one. The black shell one could be used for the piriformis, but I prefer the tennis ball. Now you just lay on top of the foam roller on the side of the iliotibial band and you roll back and forth, back and forth. And if you find a tender spot, you can stop there and hold it for 30 seconds. Obviously, this takes some upper body strength. And if it's hard for you to do this, then we can skip this part. Here I demonstrate staying in one area and just focused on 
working it out. And this can be annoying, even painful. So go as hard as you can, as light as you need it. Over time, you might actually find this become easier and easier as your overall lumbopelvic hip stability and strength improves. Using exercise bands for hip strengthening. The type of band you use, as well as the amount of tension in each band, is dependent upon which one you buy and where you buy it. Each color has a different level of resistance, so you have to experiment with which one is best for you to start. Yellow tends to be some of the lightest, whereas black seems to be one of the strongest. They need to provide enough resistance to give you a challenge, but not so much that cause excessive pain or you can't even do the exercise. I've seen these at dollar stores and at sporting goods stores, as well as you can buy them online. You can also get advice from a certified fitness trainer, as well as a physical therapist. Now take the exercise band and wrap it around your knees. A more challenging situation is wrapping it around your ankles that you see in the upper corner. The lower it is on your leg, the more challenging it will be to strengthening up your hips. Here I've placed the bottom portion of the band just above my knee. Now we do deliberate steps, deliberate controlled steps with the resistance band. It has to be enough tension to give it a challenge. Now lift my foot off the floor and then step forward, step to the middle, sometimes swing backwards. After several repetitions of this movement, say five to 10, then you switch to the other side and repeat. Now with your feet separated so there's a little tension in the band, do a little squat and push your knees outward. Just bend your knees outward as shown. To be a bit more challenging, see the squat in the upper right hand corner. This does help teach how to do a good squat. Now we start doing side steps. Keeping tension on the band, we sidestep to the left, then we sidestep to the right. Keep going back and forth for at least 30 seconds. Next we transition to monster walks. Keeping tension on the band while taking giant steps forward and backwards. And do this for at least 30 seconds. If you have a hard time going backwards because of balance, I recommend doing this in the kitchen. Place your hand on the kitchen counter and then go backwards. Don't just avoid not doing it because it's hard. Figure out how you can train yourself to improve your balance. Now we're going to work on the hip adductors, which are the groin muscles. I'm using two kettlebells so that I can get the resistance I need and the stretch on the band. You may want to put this around a heavy chair, a couch, or a table. The starting position should have a little bit of tension in the band. Then you swing your foot so that it comes in front of the standing foot, and then you swing it behind your standing foot. After five or ten repetitions, you switch. You can increase the challenge by the next set of exercises with a focus on keeping the foot with a the TheraBand off the floor a little bit longer than the previous sequence. You'll notice that I keep the foot touching the floor a little bit less. I'll have it touch in an arch, trying to bring my foot with a the TheraBand just barely touching the ground as I rotate back and forth. Sometimes I bring my foot right along my standing foot. Other times I'm doing an arch. Now your standing foot is also being challenged and I'm going to show you how you can keep your TheraBand foot still. Keep it just barely off the floor and right next to the standing foot. Now you can twist your hips over the standing foot and this is going to work the deep internal and external rotator cuff muscles of your hip. This is an excellent balancing exercise. Remember you can pause the video and you can spend more time on each exercise before moving on to the next one.